Well, with the summer transfers and therefore the purge out of the way, it is now time to start the new Scottish Premiership season. Let's go and see if these signings are going to get us into the top six and maybe even challenge for Europe. Hello and welcome back to Unemployed to Legends, Club 2, Episode 5 with Dundee United. My name is Craig and come up in today's video, as mentioned, the first two league games of the Scottish Premiership season against Aberdeen and Hearts, two sides who we hope to be in the mix against when challenging for Europe this season. Now just before we get into the matches, I just want to say thank you all so, so much for the support on the series so far. And also just to say we are very close to 200 subscribers on the channel so if you could do me a favour and hit the like button, smash the big red subscribe button as well. Not only does it help the channel out, it's also free to do and who doesn't love something free in this day and age. Now for before we get into the actual games, just a quick summary of the overall transfers which we went through in the last episode. If you didn't see the transfer episode I urge you to go back and watch it a lot happened players went play a lot of players came in but one player in particular left that is a bit disappointing but it did help fund the rebuild that we went through paul nebel has left uh dundee united he's gone to west bromwich albion in the premier league i believe yeah he's in the premier league for 12 million pounds which is higher than the release clause that he had on his contract so we managed to squeeze a little bit more out of a, a newly promoted premier league side Yes, it's a shame to lose him, but I feel that we have strengthened significantly, particularly in that area of the pitch where we've got Kwame Poku, who I feel is a very good signing for us. He's coming from League One Peterborough. He was a regular there. He's played a lot of football at 23 years of age. He's also a Ghanaian international. Unfortunately, though, you won't be able to see him, certainly in the first match. Actually, no, not even in this whole episode because he has picked up a calf strain. So he's out for up to three weeks so I feel once he comes back into the squad he will be absolutely fine now like I mentioned first two games against Aberdeen and home against Hearts I feel this first match against Aberdeen is going to be an absolute test for us we did lose against them at Pitadry their ground last season and they did improve a lot just like we did towards the end of the season so I'm hoping these new signings could certainly make a statement against I can't even remember what uh, their nickname is of Aberdeen. The Dons, that's it. Their nickname is the Dons. There's only one Dons as far as I'm concerned and they're in South London. Anyway, on to the starting eleven for the first match. You've got Vickers in goal, a back four of Cunningham, Ryan Edwards, O'Connor and Freeman who's in place of the injured Darnell Johnson who we did sign in the summer. Unfortunately he's going to be out for a while, up to seven weeks. He picked up another torn ankle ligament injury why another torn ankle ligament injury uh he's got an entire history of them you may see most of it just behind my head but he's picked up about six different ankle ligament injuries in his entire career so far which is a bit of a problem uh, johnston winter o'donnell mentioned sorry are in the midfield with avora edwards on the right wing in place of the injured kwame poku and then you've got johnny kenny who is in permanently now very very happy he's in permanently as our advanced forward after the second half of the season he had with us last season major major coup and Declan Glass is alongside him up front in place of the injured Ross Stewart who should be back for the next match against Hearts along with Tyrese Fornar. Fornar has actually come back from injury already but then he got re-injured in pre-season stands to reason we will go through the new signings as we see them when they make their appearances I imagine one or two players will make their debuts today the only debutant in the starting 11 of course Mikey Johnston again we went through all the players in the last episode again I urge you to go back and watch the last episode as well all the lowdown on all the new players all their attributes history and report cards as well and I feel many of them have strengthened the team or at the very least given us uh, strength and depth which was something we kind of lacked last season and I hope that we've addressed it this season especially if you want to make a challenge uh, up in the top half of the league but as much as I say it's the top half of the league we're aiming for if you're in the top half 
you are effectively going for Europe at the same time. There's like five European places in a 12-team league. Absolutely amazing. Right, this is a derby match. I've actually learnt that uh, online when looking all this up. Aberdeen Dundee United is a new firm derby, apparently, which is something I never knew even existed. Obviously, we know all about the old firm derby, Celtic and Rangers, but if Aberdeen and Dundee United, so I suppose if they both take over uh, Scottish supremacy, it would be a new firm, wouldn't it? I suppose that would make a little bit more sense. Right, first highlight, and he's gone to Aberdeen and is into the side netting. It's been a very, a fairly quiet first 30 minutes apart from that highlights, but sometimes in away games you just want to get as much uh, perform, not only much performance, but also maybe just grab a point out of it if you can, especially against teams such as Aberdeen, who are very, very tough at home. I think they smashed Rangers in a home match last season and we have drawn first bloods in the new firm derby it's Aberdeen nil Dundee United 1 Johnny Kenny has scored his first goal of the season he's continuing that great form from last season quality signing 2 million pounds 1 million up front 2 million pounds and he could be the man who would fire us into Europe uh, potentially this season very very happy with that free kick to Aberdeen as we are starting to close in on half time and Cunningham sweeping up very nicely. Vickers, whose place is under threat now, actually, compared to last season. We have a new goal, another new, two new goalkeepers, actually. One back up in Arthur Okonkwo. And, of course, Tom Wooster, who is going to be our reserve goalkeeper, effectively. Nice header down by Johnston there. Heading forward by Cunningham. Kenny into Johnston. I'd like to Kenny to get into the box, please. Yep, he, there's a few people in there. Kenny has picked it up. Makes the pass, and there is O'Donnell, but it's, it's just too crowded in that area. You try to get the shot off, but the keeper just gathers up very, very nicely. 1-0 at half-time. Very close game, judging by the XG. Not much in the way of chances, but we have snuck that one important goal to get us in front at the halfway mark. Now, let's see if we can just try and insert a little bit more dominance in this second half. Quite a few bookings that are knocking around uh, some of the Aberdeen players. Freeman... Coming inside to just clean up. Very, very nice. Johnston should have taken that down, man. Come on. You're better than that. And they are through here. And they have put the ball in the back in the net. But there is a suspicion of offside. It all came from that Johnston mistake. And the goal has been awarded. So Johnston should have just taken the ball down. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, he was onside. That's a shame. Like I said, Aberdeen were never going to just... Uh, roll over at home they are obviously a very good team here I mean a draw would actually be okay but what we're going to do we are going to make a couple of changes I've just made one there where Fabio Mane is going to come on for Mikey Johnston in fact actually he's just picked up an injury <sighs> foot injury blimey we're picking up a lot of injuries uh, over pre-season and now into the first game of the season uh, Liam Morrison who has come back from injury is going to come on for Ryan Edwards and I'm just thinking I might want a little bit of pace up front so Declan Glass is going to come off for new signing Paolo Banjaki who is going to, who's going to be a squad player for this season he's an 18 year old Portuguese right winger uh, with, that, with very very good potential I think it's 5 star potential he's coming in with yep from Portugal I think he could be a, nice, a player who will develop very nicely. Also, hopefully he'll get on well with Fabio Mane. They're both Portuguese players, so hopefully they'll be able to help each other settle in very, very nicely. We'll give him a run out on the right with Avura Edwards, uh, the pace merchants, being uh, put up front as the advance forward. Johnny Kenny can just come in, uh, drop in, and just hopefully link up nicely with our midfield and O'Connor has just bagged his first header of the season he's been very quiet since I've joined this club but he's just got on with the job and he's just kind of flown under the radar and I've just kind of picked him without really knowing what he actually offers he offers a good header up front so we'll take that next up on the highlight reel can we actually win the ball back <laughs> I enjoy when we have the ball and just like anyone else, I hate when we don't have 
the ball. I'd like us to win the ball back and just play it all the way to Edwards. Oh, and speaking of Edwards, he's just won the ball back for himself. He's like screw relying on everyone else. Mane come, cutting through there. Has a shot, but it has been... I think that was saved or was that off the post? I'm not too sure. But now there's a counter-attack going on here. And Aberdeen have broken clear. Oh my god, they've just hit the post as well. It's end-to-end -end stuff at the moment. What the heck is going on? Let's just calm things down, guys. Come on. Let's just drop back to balance a little bit. There's no need to go mental. I think we have another couple of substitutions as well. Ooh. Oh, it's all happening first day of the season. Right, O'Donnell is tired. So we're going to give a debut to George Thomason. Uh, free signing from Celtic. He's actually someone who we agreed to uh, bring in back in January. He's actually a director of football signings. So time to rise and shine. It's time to let us know why you have been signed. Uh, O'Connor is actually shattered. So Odessina is going to come on at centre-back. Let's see if my director of football is as good at uh, making transfers as possible. And it's in the back of the net again. But there is another suspicion of offside. Uh, offsides have happened from free kicks. Uh, it's not looking good, is it? Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> I mean, there was three of them free at the back post. Oh, I've just pressed encourage uh, as a highlight has started. But three of them who are free at the back post as Odessino just heads over. That doesn't scream very good from my own centre-backs, does it? Then again, I don't think I've actually set up defensive corner instructions which is a big mistake on my part as Aberdeen have uh, the ball here but Banjaki winning the ball back and using some pace to get forward and Kenny's got absolutely nothing left <laughs> he's just tired <laughs> bless him but Banjaki very impressive from him Edwards why are you not a fun look at him sprint my goodness this man is a sprinter Mane play the ball in man I beg you Oh, Edwards has been taken down there. That's got to be a penalty. Come on, ref. I feel we were screwed there. As, oh, God, they are forward here. And it is a very long highlight. So I'm not particularly happy with this. And that's off the bar. But I feel Edwards was taken out there. We got robbed of a penalty. And now we have 30 seconds to go. God, we got a highlight with 30 seconds left. <laughs> it's all happening in this one match. We still got hearts to come up. And the midfield has just gone missing completely. He's offside there. That's definitely offside. I mean, good save by Vickers. Well done for him, that. But that looks like it will be a draw to start the season. A 2-2 draw away at Aberdeen. I'm not going to sniff too badly at that. Yes, we gave away the lead twice. But for opening day of the season, and we didn't even have our full strongest side out, be interesting to see what happens when we get Poku and Johnson back. But we will see if we can pick up our first victory of the season at home against Hearts coming up next. Second league game now against Hearts and as much as I don't want to say we're in an injury crisis, but the injuries are starting to mount up a little bit. Mikey Johnston picked up an injury in the last match. He's out for two to three weeks, so he's back in roughly two weeks after this match which means Fabio Mane will be starting on the left-hand side of the midfield. Alex Murphy is stepping in at centre-back in place of Ryan Edwards. He's a new summer signing, is Alex Murphy, the 21-year-old Irish fullback, And he was meant to be playing as a left-back, but he can also play decently, apparently, as a centre-back. And he's over six foot tall, so he's worth giving a shot at centre-back for. £200,000 from Newcastle United after many loan spells in Ireland. In fact, was he in Ireland a few times? He was at Dundalk and Bohemians, fair enough. So we'll get, we'll have a good look at him in today's match alongside O'Connor. Banjiki will be starting on the right wing in place of Ovoa Edwards. I would like Ovoa Edwards to be fresher uh, towards the end of a match when the opposition is tiring. And then Edwards will just literally blast his way through any defence. So... Glass retains his place in the starting lineup, despite the fact that where is he? Um, what's his? What, how am I forgetting what his name is? Ross Stewart. He is back from injury, but he played the reserves match, I think one or two days before, so he is tired. We may or may not see him in this match, but the good news is he is back from injury. So it's just Darnell Johnson, Kwame Poku, and Mikey Johnston who are currently injured, and hopefully it will stay that way because. The, the amount of injuries that we've had 
especially over pre-season, was horrendous. This team could not stay fit. Right, this is our first home game of the season, so I'm hoping we can use that to our advantage, pick up a massive three points. Uh, we did over Hearts last season, but of course it's been an entire summer transfer window ever since. I'd like to think we've strengthened more than Hearts. Let's have a look at their starting lineup. Effectively going with a back seven, aren't they? That is the staple for Football Manager. It's not quite a back seven, actually. That's not really fair to them. But it has been a staple of FM23 teams so far. It's been a quiet opening 20 minutes so far, although Hearts do have the ball here. I would, I feel like we're not really imposing ourselves. It feels like, I say that, Kenny has just imposed himself by winning the ball there. There is Murphy, first time we're looking at him. Nice little short passing game. Absolutely fine. Banjiki cutting inside. Over to Mane. There we go. The Portuguese connection on both ends of the pitch. And there is Glass in the middle, but it's his shots. If you can call that a shot, it's just straight at the goalkeeper. Let me just have a look at my line of engagements. Let's have it a bit higher. I feel we need to have it a bit higher at home. Just start pressing them a little bit more. The Terrors fans expect a bit more from us in terms of pressing. And what a wild header that was. But it was a bit worrying that we have two players in there who just did not pick up the heart striker. Another set piece, another throw in, and it has gone to Hearts again. Um, hmm. Is this just the start of the season stuff that we need to sort out? Such as pressing a bit more. Because I'm not exactly impressed by our showing here in our first home game of the season. Well, one there by Thomason. I've, I just need to talk smack about this team more often. They, they start performing then. Murphy linking up well with the goalkeeper. Plays it through to Thomason. Plays it into Kenny. Lovely. Bit more direct. Mane. Cunningham into Thomason. Oh my god, the ball's just bouncing around everywhere. Banjaki heads it back in, but it is in the hands of the goalkeeper. I feel the ball was just pinballing its way between the goalkeeper and our uh, strikers. It is nil nil at half time. We have dominated the first half, apparently, chances wise. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, pump the fists. Don't lose faith. We've created as many chances. We need to start putting these chances away. This is the problem we had last season. Creating so many chances, but not putting them in the back of the net. And that's what cost us a top six finish last season. I mean, I do feel it would have been a bit early having just joined the club to be in the top half and then challenging for Europe. But we surely could have actually done uh, an absolute madness in qualifying for Europe. Mane with the ball on the edge of the area. Plays it over to O'Connor. He doesn't have a shot, but unfortunately Kenny couldn't quite get the shot away. Over to Cunningham on the left-hand side. Why did I just pause it? Never mind. It is into class and there's another chance that's gone begging. Another one. I've kind of had it with the front line at this point. So we are going to make a couple of changes. Glass is going to come off. Stewart is going to come on. And as for midfield, Fournier is not fully fit. Ryan Winter is going to come on for Thomason, who's had a good game. I'll give him that. Thomason... As the box-to-box -box has had a decent game. O'Donnell's not played massively well. I'll tell you what. What about O'Donnell for Wintel? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, Thomason's going to be the central midfielder. Wintel will be the box-to-box. -box. He's the fresher man. And looking at my defence. Lewis Strap Cunningham's having a good game, in all fairness. Uh, Liam Morrison... Can come on for O'Connor, who is looking very tired. Alex Murphy will stay on. O'Connor is the more tired of the two centre-backs. So let's go and see if we can grab that winner. Uh, Gardner Hickman is going to come on, I think, for Freeman. And the ball is just about cleared, but only as far as Thomason. Back out to Wintle. Oh, he lost the ball. He tried to turn. Oh, oh, that was so... What happened there? Hey, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What happened? I... How do I go back? I'm pretty sure the ball just went in and then just bounced straight back out. I'm going to have to see that again in the edit and just see what actually happens. I just realised Ovo Edwards hasn't even come on and we've drawn 0-0. In a game where we had 2.26 XG. Are you freaking kidding me? Trust the process. Where have I heard that one before? Okay, so we're seventh in the league after two games. 
but we've got two points, and realistically, we should have at least four. How how did we not score in that game? Goldless glass worries Dundee United. Hey, goalless Dundee United full stop worries me. And I'm hoping we can get that sorted before the next episode, which I'm looking around sort of October time. It might be earlier if we don't actually start scoring more and winning games. But for the moment, we'll be back around a quarter of the way through the season for Queen of South and a home match against Rangers. Now, excuse me while I go and try and sort out this misfiring bunch and get them scoring in front of goal. If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button so you don't miss the rest of the season as we challenge, or hopefully we'll be challenging for top six and maybe European football for next season. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for your support on the series so far and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode.